Welcome to the Eating Label Show. My name is Craig Collins, and I have a special guest. We talk in health and wellness, uh, Gary Rupshan. And when we get um, to get his story and the inspirational story and the amount of weight he lost over the years, and not only that, what, what mental capacity you need to have in order to go through that. But before we get started, I just want to promote a few books um, to get people inspiring. And this book is called Medical Medium Life Changing Foods Save Yourself and the Ones You Love with the Hidden Healing Powers of Fruits and Vegetables by Anthony Williams. So go out and get this book. It will teach you the, the hidden uh, medicine is thy food and to heal your certain chronic diseases, get off the meat and chicken and so forth. Another book I like to promote is Alkaline Plant-Based Diet, Reversing Disease and Saving the Planet with an Alkaline Plant-Based Diet by, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly, Aquil Anise. A-Q-I-L-A-N-I-Y-S, get the book. I just got this book. These are great books for healing. If you have high blood pressure, chronic diseases, your journey on healing yourself. Welcome to the show, Gary. Appreciate you joining me today. Appreciate it. So we have Gary Rupchan that has a inspiration, inspirational journey of health and wellness and weight loss. Uh, I met Gary about a couple of weeks ago and asked him to come on the show. And I think his story is incredible on the amount of uh, weight he lost, and not only that, what it's done to his body physically and mentally. So Gary, welcome to the show, man, appreciate you. How you doing, man, pleasure to be here. Good, good, let's get right into it, man. Um, how much were you at your heaviest, and how did you feel um, with the weight on you, and did you have any medical issues by weighing, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, <laughs> any no medical issues, by the amount of weight you had. Right. Uh, my highest weight was 365 pounds. Now I'm tall, so you can hide that. You could, you could hide 365 pounds, but it's definitely there. My highest weight was 365 pounds. And hmm. most scales don't go past 365. You have to get a special scale in order to get weight. And my journey started, as far as my health, I was 33 years old mm -hmm. and I went to the doctor. And I got the blood work done, A1C, all that good stuff. And I had high cholesterol. So she wanted me, at that time, she wanted me to put me, she wanted to put me on Lipitor. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the, the drug is now. It's probably called a different thing. But right. it was Lipitor back then. The cholesterol right. medicine to lower your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? Give me, give me three months. Mm -hmm. And if I don't lower my cholesterol, I will take, I will take the Lipitor. Mm -hmm. So that's how my journey started. I... Three months later, I came back and it was significantly lowered through my food choices. Not, not a drastic change, but just little changes so, that added up into, into the, cholesterol, the cholesterol being lowered in, in, in less than three months, man. Because I told her, give me three months. And if my cholesterol is not lowered, I will take the cholesterol medicine. So I wanted to do something before they, they uh, you know, gave me something to lower it. That's all. That's how my journey started, man. So did you have anything else going on? Like a lot of people, they, they hit me up. They may have high blood pressure. No. So pre-diabetic. I was, I was pre-diabetic. Uh, the blood pressure wasn't, wasn't, wasn't bad, but it definitely needed, needed, needed some work. And it was mostly the cholesterol. The cholesterol, cholesterol. Issues. And you say pre-diabetic. A lot of people hit me up and they say, hey, I'm pre-diabetic. What does that mean? I go, well, your body has too much sugar in it. But right. that's a whole other story. So what were some of the things... Go into some of the things you did in order to lower the cholesterol and did, did your, when they say you're pre-diabetic, those levels go to normal. Right. What I, the simplest thing I did, the first month, all I did was I walked more and I slowly implemented more fruits and vegetables into my diet. Ah. I was still eating meat at the time, so I was vegetarian. So I, okay. I, just slowly, I just slowly started implementing better foods and walking more. That's it. I didn't go cold turkey into it. Let me, let me totally change everything and then start eating like a rabbit. I just slowly uh, uh, lowered my calories and, and, and significantly uh, introduced more fruits and vegetables to my diet. That's it. I started, I started walking. The first month, I lost 20 pounds. Wow. Without even trying, just, just walking, not, not going crazy, doing cardio, oh, I got to lose this weight. No, just slowly and progressively building up. And you know how they say you need 21 days to, to, to mentally change a habit? Mm -hmm. I, I was doing that and I didn't even realize I was doing it. So I changed the habit, the wow. bad habits that I had 
and introduced new good healthy habits. Okay. That's it, man. What type of what, what type of vegetables specifically uh, did you add to your diet, and what did you lessen your meat eating? Because I have a lot of people that call me and say, "Hey, do I have to give up meats? I like to eat meats," and I always tell them it's unrealistic to go mm -hmm. cold turkey because you'll quit within a week. Right. If you're 33 years old and like me, we've been we ate meat our entire lives. Right. So talking, I'm going to share these pictures with the people. So go yeah. ahead, and tell us more about that. Yeah, man. Well. It's just a it's just a transitional process. You have to really slowly go into uh, changing your bad habits. So so any diet that is filled with more fruits and vegetables is an optimal one. I'll say it again. Any diet that is filled without with with more fruits and vegetables is an optimal one. So instead of having a lot of rice on your table on your on your plate, you do half the amount of rice that you're currently eating and add more vegetables to it. So that's what I started doing. I just started eating less of the bad stuff, still having the bad stuff, but doing less, doing less. you know, like, 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 like in the gym, you do progressive resistance. Right. You add, you add more and more and more and you build your way up. So I was building my way up to back to back to good health. Okay. So that's what I did, man. And more fruits. And I started walking, you know, started going outside, enjoying nature, enjoying the sun and not sitting on my butt as much. So more activity. Huh? So more activity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I don't look at it as exercise. See, I don't like the word exercise. It's like you said, activity. I'm going to do more activity every day. So it's not exercise because exercise, when you hear the word exercise, it, 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 it's a tedious activity. I don't want to exercise. Nobody wants to exercise because it seems boring. It seems mundane and, it, and we don't want to do it. So it's you. So you increase your activity. So when you say you increase your activity, it's doing something else to the brain. It's mm -hmm. saying, okay, okay, I'll just, you could increase your activity by doing stuff around the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so just increase your activity. And, and if everyone can see this picture, Gary, you can see your picture right here, right? Yes, sir. D dude, this is amazing. So Man. 37 here, Man. 273 here, right. and 205 here. Right. That is amazing. If that's not inspirational, <laughs> I don't know what is. And you did it without giving up your favorite, your, your favorite foods. Now, did you, let me ask a question. Did you, let's say, you eat, what type of meats did you eat? Everything? Any type of meat, man. Well, any type. Uh, uh, what, type of, what type of meat did I eat uh, before or what type of, of, of meat did I eat? While I was losing the weight. While you were losing weight, did you go from let's say everybody like chicken wings? I can't get away from chicken wings. So I don't eat them as much. I may eat them once every four months. <laughs> but did you go from bake from let's say if you fried something, did you go from frying it to baking it, or was it less meats and more fruits and vegetables? What was the ratio you went through? So people, because a lot of people, this is the number one question they ask me, and I'm quite sure they ask you the same thing also. So they want to know the, they they want to know what's going on with the meats. Can I still have it? A better way of cooking it. Now, now there's a difference between frying meat mm -hmm. and baking the meat because the oils, the oils totally changes the chemistry of 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 the, you know when you boil when you when you fry oil it just changes the molecular structure of the oil and it makes it bad for you and then you put the meat and you put stuff over it and then you fry it so that totally ruins the significance of the meat. So if you simply just change the way you eat it and just bake it, now, now it's better for you. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And instead of frying it, you just you bake it. And nowadays we have stuff like air fryers now. The, the air fryer will, will fry it for you if you still like fried foods. Okay. But it's, it, it's without oil. So that's what I did. Simple changes like that. Very simple. As soon as we add complexity into anything, it causes anxiety. So you, you, got, you, have, to make, you have to make it simple and take baby steps until you can build your way up to get to where you want to be. I, I like that because I listen, yeah, I listen to a good friend that I, I don't know him personally, but he, he says a perspective that there's no absolutes in the universe. Like I have people I follow on um, Facebook or YouTube, they say absolutely no meat whatsoever. And, no. I, and, and I can understand that perspective. And I like how Zoe says that he goes, there's no absolutes in the universe. There's only half truths. Like yeah. there's a big, there's a big circle and there's truth to take from each piece of the big circle. And 
if this worked for somebody and they did it with no me, I'm fine with it. But you listening to your story, somebody can use and take what you said. There's no, there's no right or wrong to the situation. What do you think about that? I love that, man. I love that because, because see, 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 I, I, I'm plant-based whole foods. So I eat mostly plant-based, mostly whole foods, mostly foods rich with phytonutrients, but I can't be dogmatic about the way I eat. Right. So me telling somebody to totally stop eating meat is, is, is counterproductive because that's not where they're at and they're, and they're where, where they are in life. That's not where they're at. You know, they want to have their meat still. So me being dogmatic about it, it's not how you should approach nutrition because nutrition is about bio-individuality. Everybody is different. Everybody has a different personality. Some people like meat and they're, they're, they're never going to get rid of it. So you could understand the whole meat is too much meat is not too much of anything is not good for you. Okay. So like you said, you have to really, everything is half truths and you, and you have to really do what uh, makes you happy and do what makes you healthy and you don't have to be dogmatic about about how you eat or anything so that's how i approach it man yeah good good stuff gary i appreciate that yeah. and like i said that's that's what people want to know i pretty much went you know all in being an ex-athlete i just got rid of the meats right uh, that was just me like you said i like what you said everybody's different everybody have their own individual style of doing things and i'm glad you're on this show to give right. a different perspective okay right. and another question i want to ask you inflammation did you have any inflammation when you were at, and then looking at this, I'm going to leave this picture up for a second. You don't mind if I leave this picture up, do you? No problem. Another, and then I'll flip to another picture, but uh, another question I get is inflammation. Okay, I get that question a lot. Did you have any of that going on and compare it to then and compare it to now? Talk to us about it. Absolutely. In this picture over on the left, 3, 3, 337, and, and I was higher than that. I was 365 at my highest. Uh, I mean, this, this, is, this is a young 33-year-old guy right here that mm -hmm. looks like he's, I don't know, in his late 40s. I don't know, meaning, of course, inflammation. Your knees hurt, your joints. Uh, uh, I mean, everything hurts, and, and your mind is not, your mind is clogged. Inflammation, uh, inflammation, absolutely. And when I got down to the middle weight, I felt a lot better. You could see, well, of course, I'm smiling. But then <laughs> at 205, you see the energy, and because of the food, and the information that the food is providing to your cells, like that. you come alive. Say more about that, the information on the food makes you alive. Say more about that. The food, is, food is information, man. Food is information. You are telling your body, telling your mind, telling your cells what to do. Mm -hmm. You're giving it information every time you eat. So when you eat foods with energy, that is how you feel. Mm -hmm. If you eat foods, that cause inflammation. That, that is what. That, that is how you will. That is that is how your perspective will be on life. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Without without getting too complex. Right. Yeah. And okay, we started in the beginning, and <clears throat> we're moving along. How long? Because another question we get a lot is, "What's my time frame?" People want it overnight. People want it within a couple of weeks. Right. But as you and I both know, <laughs> it, it takes some time and hard work. So. What was, I see a hundred pound difference. What was the time frame on a hundred pound difference and then correlated to the gradual weight loss? Was it by the day, by the week, by the month? Go into that. In the beginning, because you're losing water weight, if you change your, the way you eat and you walk more and you have more activity, the first month without doing anything, without stepping in the gym, I lost 20 pounds. So okay. the first month I lost 20 pounds and then the second month, you lose 15 and then the third month you lose, lose eight and then you hit like a plateau and you start losing only eight and then you start losing uh -huh. 10 next month and eight. So you, can, you, you hit that plateau where your body's like, okay, okay, we, we lost most of the weight. Uh, and now, now it slows down. So it took me a year to lose the hundred pounds. And then the, the other 65 pounds took me, it took me an extra seven months. So about under two years, a year and seven months of struggle, of pain, of hurt, of tears, of ups and downs. So mm -hmm. that's how long it took me. Wow. Yeah. I'm trying to switch to pictures right now. Is, it, sure. is the other one showing up right now? I want people to get a perspective of it. Is the other one showing up right now? Or just the, uh, the ones with the numbers on it? Just the one with the numbers on it. We'll keep it right there. It really doesn't matter. I mean, <clears throat> any no picture problem. of you is, is amazing. Yeah. So now, now you're down to 
273. Mm-hmm. How, how are you feeling now? And uh, how long did you say it took from 337 to 273? A year. It took a year. Yes. Okay. So I want everybody to understand that, that if, if, if you have, and, and I don't want to use the word because some people, we're not shaming anyone when we say a lot of weight. Uh, we just, you know, we get older, we, we have certain habits and the, the food just accumulate and we put on weight. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, make it sound like we're using the word fat or anything like that. Okay. I know you may use it, but I don't want the audience to feel we're talking about them or anything for people that has a lot of weight that feel bad. You, you get what I'm saying? So, so now from three, so it took you a year to lose this weight. Yes. Uh, was there any setbacks? From Absolutely. Seven to 273. Going to that, what were some of the setbacks? Did you fall off track? Did you gain weight back? And how did you get back on track? Going to that. Absolutely, there were setbacks. It's never easy. Nothing good is ever easy. So, all right, the first month you, lo- you lose, I lost 20, 20 pounds. And then the second month, you know, I'm, on, I have, I'm having momentum. And they're like, okay, wow, I just lost 20 pounds in one month. Let's do this. I can do this. Then the second month comes, and usually you have holidays. It was, it was Easter time, you know, you're eating a lot of candy with the kids, you're going out. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then you have um, just situations where you go out with the family and you just make, make bad decisions. And then that one bad decision and that one meal turns into like a week of eating bad. Mm-hmm. So setbacks like that. And then all of a sudden you stop uh, doing your activity. You mm-hmm. stop doing your exercise and then it turns into two or three weeks. So setbacks like that. You can't turn a little mistakes like that into, into major setbacks. So that's what happened to me a couple of times. You know, you, there's, there's the 4th of July. There's a, a whole different types of uh, parties that you have to go to. And then you make a bad decision. And then it just, it just happens, man. So those are the setbacks that happen. And then you just feel lazy sometimes. And you miss a whole, miss a couple of weeks of the gym. So I had a couple of setbacks then, man. Okay. So there you have it, everybody. Um, you will have setbacks. And like Gary said, just, just get back into it. So what's, what's the mentality you need to have when you do have those setbacks? What, what did you personally go through uh, going to the mentality? You shared some with me. Uh, what was the 90% you were sharing with me? Remember those it's a, it, yeah. it has to be, it has to be a lifelong goal. It has to be. Sorry about that. No problem. All the calls in here. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, well, sorry, what was the question? What were the, what were the setbacks? What were the setbacks? And you were talking to me about 90%. You said a 90% rule, or you said 90% of it. Can't remember the conversation we were having, but you mentioned 90%. 90% of it is mental. It, 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 it's a, see, when you're dealing with, with addiction, you're dealing with, you're dealing with the brain and the brain chemistry and the brain releasing dopamine and the overproduction of dopamine, which mm-hmm. is the feel-good chemical. So when you eat bad foods, your brain is overstimulating itself with the bad food, and you want more. And you want more and you can't satisfy that overproduction of dopamine. So you have to really realize what's going on psychologically in your head Mm -hmm. and how you could uh, stop that and overcome that. Because if you don't, if you don't realize uh, what your brain is doing and how your brain is reacting to what you eat, then, then, then you'll just keep repeating the bad habits. Like this, this is this, this drink I have here is releasing the feel good chemicals in my brain when I drink it, but it's not addictive. It's, it's giving me just enough dopamine and not an overproduction of it where I have this and then I want more. I, I just want to have it all. I just want to keep eating it. That's what happened with, with, happens with bad food and happens with any type of addiction. So once you realize what you're dealing with, you know how to fix it. Mm-hmm. So somebody is watching this right now. Okay? Yeah. We're just in the middle part. We're going from the, the 337 down to the 273. And it's just the middle part. Somebody wants to start is going to watch this later on tonight when I post it on Monday. Right. What would you tell them? What, 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 would you, what advice would you give them? They've been wanting to start. They came upon a new year. They started New Year's resolutions, and you know how that goes. <laughs> mm-hmm. What would you tell them to do? Just to, just to start. Start by simply, like I'm in the house right now. After we... After we get off of here, I'm going to go you know, clean up a little bit. And that counts as activity. Start off slow. You don't have to necessarily go to the gym right away. Because when, when you're out of shape and you don't go to the gym at all, it's, it's, 
it's an anxious feeling for people to just go from not doing anything to go to the gym on the treadmill and to work out. It seems it seems like a like a like a large task, but you can do start off simple by doing more activity, like you said earlier on. Just do more activity. Just walk around the house. Just get moving. Go outside and walk for five minutes. It might be cold. It might be warm. Walk for five minutes, and you see how that changes your mentality and changes how you feel and releases that euphoric feeling in your in your head. And you don't feel inflamed. You don't feel stressed out. You're releasing that feel good feeling when you do more activity. So that's what I would tell people in the beginning. Just just do something every day that's gonna build up into you getting back into shape and living the way and feeling the way you want to feel. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Good, good. So you guys hear it right there, just like Gary said, just, just get started. Don't overthink it. Just start with the activity and 90% of it is mental. Mental, man. So now you're at 273, Gary. Does the levels, did you go back to the doctor in between that time, did the levels drop? Where are you? I, the levels still drop. She said, she said whatever, <laughs> man, whatever you are doing, <laughs> keep doing it. Uh, because your levels are, are are normal now, so and that's this is at two seventy three. Mm -hmm. She said I'm I'm still heavy, mm -hmm. but she says from whatever you were doing, the way you were eating, keep mm -hmm. doing it because that's lowering your cholesterol. Okay. So she didn't have to put me on the medicine anymore. I said yes, that was like a that was like a breath of fresh air, man, because I was so determined to to, to do something different, man. To, to, you know, just to do something different because you just at thirty three years old. Come on, you're young. In your forties, you're young. In your fifties, you're young. Food is everything, man. You can't, you can't get away from it. You can't, you can't get away from it. So how can't much? When you took a two, three sixty something, how much medication were you on? How, how I wasn't. Well, I didn't. I didn't go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I only found out when I went to the doctor that that those, those that stuff was stuff was going wrong. Just so my cholesterol. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of high blood pressure, and my A one C was was pre diabetic. Not not diabetic, believe it or not. It was pre. Diabetic, so I had cholesterol issues. I had a little, little high blood pressure, not, not too bad. She said it just needs to lower down a little bit, and I had that. Just, just simple things. I didn't have diabetes, nothing like that. She said you're pre-diabetic, so you have to get your uh, A1C down to about a five, because I think over a six or a seven is is diabetes, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. But did they put you on any medications in between that time? No medication. Or you just said, forget this. Uh, I need to get these things down. I said, if give me three months, if I don't come back and my cholesterol is not lowered, I will take the Lipitor. That's exactly, I remember those okay. exact words. Okay. If my cholesterol is not down, if, if, if things don't improve, I will take your pills. I'll take it. Okay. And the reason I'm going to that, Gary, because a lot of my friends, if you saw my Facebook page, I got over, you know, over 1,200 friends. You know, right. Detroit area, I'm from Detroit. And right. I'm, 40, I'm 47, man, pushing 48. And most of my friends, uh, I lost a few of them, man, due to health issue, cancer, whatever it is. Oh, and wow. people hit me up and they may have, you know, some di diabetes going on, pre-diabetes. They're on blood mm -hmm. pressure medication. They're like, what do I do? So that's the reason I harped on the medications. If you were on it, yeah. you, you said, you know what? Nah, give me three months and we got this. Right. So good stuff. Good stuff. So now, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, well, the first thing also, the first thing you do is, is, is that you, of course, you, you, you're under your doctor's supervision. So you keep going to your doctor and keep getting checkups. But then it, it, it all boils down to you and your decisions and whether you really want to do it because it has to be done. It, it, it ha there, there has to be a change. You can't get away from it. Okay. You know? Good, good. So now talk to us about from 273 to 205. So I'm going to put another picture up. <laughs> this one out I'm going to share, but uh, I think this is powerful. Let me know if you see it. But yeah, man, from... 273 to 205. Let me let me go to screen share and not press a wrong button here. <laughs> oh good, it's okay. I'm trying to Yeah, I'm just enjoying I'm just enjoying my uh, shake here, man. Are you are you able to uh oh are you able to see the picture? I see it. Okay, great, great, great. So that's from two two and I'm getting it right, 273 to 205? Yes, sir. Okay. Now how long so a year from three three something to two seventy five. So how long from two? So now you're in. You now you're in mid stride. So you, yes, you got sir. To a science. So from two seventy three to two oh five. How long did it take you? <clears throat> seven months. Seven months. 
What's seven talk, months of talk to us of about that. Well, it's a it's a it's a it's a paradigm it's a paradigm shift. It's a totally you're 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 getting into a totally different zone. You're you're feeling more energetic. You're excited about life. Mm -hmm. uh, you have more energy now. I'm six three, so I'm pretty tall. And mm -hmm. in high school, I weighed two hundred and twenty pounds. So I'm even lighter than I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So I'm I cannot explain the energy. And the feeling that I had when I was that way, I can't, I can't, I can't explain it, man. You just have so much energy, and 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 you just want to get out there and and live, man. You, it, it's it's a total, it's a total change. It's an energy boost. It's a, it's a new paradigm. It's a new mental attitude that you have towards life, man. I, I mean, oh man, so much energy, man. And you know, that's, and that's powerful right there. I mean, just looking at the, the, the transformation <clears throat> that, that you went through with this particular picture right here. And <clears throat> what year and month did you start it? When you, what month and year was it when you started? <clears throat> A month and year was I starting from the... From the um, what, year? what year? What year did I start what? Your, the, the, your journey. What year was it? Oh, uh, man. It was a, a couple of years ago, man. About five years ago. So this whole process took... From beginning to end, what would you say? The whole process from ups and down, ups and with ups and downs, it took it, it took years, man. Because one minute I would be, I would be, uh, I would be overweight, and the next minute I would be in shape. One minute I would be overweight, the next minute I'd be in shape. So it took uh, just a, a up and down, like yo-yo dieting, man. I yo-yo diet a lot until I finally realized psychologically what was going on in my head, mm -hmm. uh, and with you know the whole addiction thing and how to overcome that addictive process and that addictive thing that I was going through. Okay. The reason I ask that because, you know, a lot of times we watch a lot of, I'm sure you do like me, I watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of uh, yeah. plant-based stuff on how to get better information, information, information. And, right. and, and, and it seems like we see the beginning and the end, but nobody right. talks about the middle, you know, and the struggles we have. And that's my, I know my friends personally want to know, okay, they're struggling right now. And they want to they want to be able to see somebody that struggle with it, and not only see a beginning and an end. Absolutely. What are those What are those dark days like? You know, that's what. My, they yeah, my struggle, man, was up and up and down, up and down. And I'm sure people could relate to this. Yo yo dieting. One minute you're in fantastic shape, the next minute you're out of shape. One minute you're in fantastic shape. So I had to realize what was what was going on in my life to cause me to be in shape one minute and then go right back out of shape. What psychological factors, what circumstances, and we all have different circumstances and different situations that happen unexpectedly or expectedly in our lives, mm -hmm. what is causing you to go up and down like that? Mm -hmm. And once I realized uh, that, hey, you have to stay one way, pick one, pick mm -hmm. one. If you either you wanna stay, stay all the way on the left like that or you wanna be all the way on the right in, in fantastic shape. Pick one. You can't be somewhere in the middle and constantly going over there and constantly going over there. It's just taxed into the to, to the to your body. It's taxed into your mind and it's taxed. It's not good for you. It's not good for your body and it's not good for your heart. So that was my issue with the yo-yo dieting, man. Mm -hmm. That was a struggle. And it still is because you have to realize that hey, you know, I know I could I can go back and gain weight easily. So I have to keep this momentum going and I have to be habitual about it. And I have to get it done no matter what, at least six times a week. You got to get it done no matter what. And as soon as you fall off, you realize that, hey, I got to get back on it because I can go right back to where I was. Wow. And that's real, Gary. I mean, that's what people want to know. That's, I mean, that is real as a gift. People don't want to hear, you know, I was here and then now I'm down to here and and they're clapping. They want to know the struggles. They want to know the defeats because people are defeated out there, man. Um, yep. And and I think I think I think this is going to help a lot of people. I hope it does. This is going to help a lot of people, brother. And I appreciate you doing this. Uh, before we wrap up, okay? Because this is not going to be our last one. Because I'm feeling the energy from you, brother. <laughs> like you awesome. can help a lot of people, my man. So, what is a typical morning for you as far as eating? 
What 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 do you and, do your body uh, in the morning time? I I intimate I intimate fast. So mm -hmm. normally, naturally, naturally we we naturally we fast naturally when we when we go to sleep. Let's say we go to sleep at ten. And then we wake up like around six, you know, naturally your body's fasting for eight hours there. Mm -hmm. I, I go even further. I extend the fast to about 12 o'clock because I, I honestly don't feel like eating. Mm -hmm. And naturally the digestive process in the body, usually around 6 p.m. and 11 a.m. in the morning, your body's naturally di digesting everything and using it for energy. So I let the body digest and I have food. I start eating like around 12. It's 11 10 53 here so i usually start uh, i intermittent fast so I, I usually have like a six hour window where i could eat and some people even some people less than that window some eat, some people eat one 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 time a day some people eat like me within the six hours i have a couple meals a couple mm -hmm. nice small meals and um, i usually work out on an empty stomach to be honest it's not for everybody right right lost your personality because i have i have I have more energy in the morning and and i feel like when i eat it slows me down okay yeah how many how many days a week do you intermittent fat intermittent fast and do that every day so you don't when you wake up in the morning do you drink, i don't eat do you drink a lot I, of water i don't I, oh water i have water i have tea okay like, I black tea any type of tea is good for you mm -hmm. you have free radicals Mm -hmm. Some of it, some tea have, I have ca caffeine in it, you know? So that's what I do. I only have stuff to drink. I have my water. I have my my tea, my green tea, black tea. There's a whole different. Whole I do not eat, man. Do not eat until 12. I would not have my first meal until 12. That's that's good. That's good stuff for people. And, and I know people would cringe and go. But once you get used to getting, like you said, Sitting, um, getting call. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. So like you said before, once you get the electric foods in your body, like you said, food is information. Once you get the proper foods in your body, yeah. your body won't be hungry because you're, you're nourished inside. Right. right. But if you're eating eggs or meats in the morning, that has right. no nutrients. But now you went... Go ahead. We lost you there. Yeah. You back? Yeah, man. Like you get... Huh? So, I said we lost audio there, so yeah, you're back now. Right. So what's the so you go into twelve? What's your meal at twelve? What, 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 oh. what do you usually eat? Usually, I start off. I start off with a with a nice protein shake, man, or or a or a nice smoothie with a lot of a lot of fruits, man. Like today, I'm gonna have. Well, I just I just had some actually, so I I did it early, but that's okay. It's an hour. I, I'm an hour early on my drink, so I usually have. Uh, bananas, strawberries, just just a shake, man. You know, okay. a protein shake, any type of shake that, that that's available. I usually have a shake. I start off with a shake, okay. and I don't eat heavy foods right away because I'm just coming out from a workout. So you need you need you need uh, energy right away. You need mm -hmm. to you know give your body and your cells energy. So me drinking a smoothie is gonna make my body have energy readily available. Okay. After workout, after after doing cardio and after doing a workout, so. I start I start off with a with a smoothie and then I, I go to my meals, you know, have a nice salad and anything else anything else that I want that's healthy. Right. And then for dinner? For dinner I usually have a nice big huge salad and I usually mix it up, man. Sometimes I have, you know, potatoes. There's a whole bunch of different plant based foods that you could that you could have. Yeah. If you go to my if you go to my page, you'll see you'll see you'll see a lot of it. Yesterday, like yesterday I had a, a nice split pea. A nice yellow split pea soup with, with carrots and celery and a whole bunch of spices on it. <laughs> there's, there's, there's hundreds of different rep recipes. And like I said in the beginning, uh, uh, food is about, nutrition is about bio-individuality. Like I might have a soup or I might crave a soup or I might crave smoothies. Then other people might, 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 might crave other things. You know what I mean? So depending on your personality is how you should eat. But as long as you eat healthy, you'll be fine. You'll be fine because you don't have to even count calories. But because uh, what's that saying? Um, don't count calories, count nutrients. Don't count calories, count nutrients, and you'll be fine. You don't have to get into macros and and and, and do this and do that. And, and don't count calories, count nutrients. That's all I gotta say, man. 
are you able to go into that a little bit more? Because in the, in the last year, I, sh I started doing that. I, I never counted calories, but a lot of my friends, they go, they always ask me, how many calories can I have? How many calories? Yeah, no. well, I'll tell you. I'll go go into that just a little bit more. Right. This is the answer to that. Now, the reason why <laughs> nutritionists say count your macros, your macronutrients, which are the carbs, the fats, and the proteins, right? Because for an overweight person, for them to maintain the heavy body set that they have, Let's say, let's say I'm 300 and something pounds. And to, for me to maintain that body weight, I need 3,500 calories a day. What they do, the reason they say count your macros and your macronutrients, because mm -hmm. uh, if you, if you want to lose weight, you have to be at a calorie deficit. And if you want to gain weight, you have to be at a calorie surplus. So mm -hmm. that's why they say count your calories and count your, your uh, macros, because they want you to eat less, lower your calories so that you can lose up to a pound a week. But I can, but you don't have to do that because if you count your nutrients instead of counting your calories, you negate that complicated process of measuring stuff and counting your calories. And instead of, instead of doing that, you have stuff like a, this is, this is count your calories. I'm sorry. This is count your nutrients, not your calories. Right. Yeah, yeah. Have a fruit, have a healthy, just eat, make better choices. You don't have to go into the complicated micronutrients, <laughs> phytonutrients, you don't have to, as soon as you make food or anything in your life complex, mm -hmm. it makes you nervous, it makes you anxious, and it doesn't make you do what you have to do because you're confusing yourself. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't make nutrition confusing. Count nutrients, not calories. There you That's go. What I, I appreciate that, brother. Count, yes, sir. don't count calories, Count, count nutrients, nutrients because our body needs nutrients to fuel our life source and to fuel our life system. I love it, brother. I love it. I'm going to put this picture up one more time, Gary. As yeah. we wrap up, as I put this up, can you share with the people your information, how they can get a hold of you? I'm, I'm going to put stuff. I'm going to put all your Facebook and your yeah. uh, all your channels, your social media, so uh, your email on there. So if somebody wants to hit you up for a nutrition consultation, uh, they can. Right. Uh, that'd be great. I'm going to share this. So if you can uh, put this picture up one more time, man. I think this yeah. is amazing. So as we close this out, if you can give the people your Facebook information. Yes, sir. Just, just go to my Facebook page, punch in my name, my full name, Gary Rupchan, and that's it. You could send me an inbox. And that, that's pretty much it, man. I don't have a website yet, but I will. Mm -hmm. in the future so just hit up my inbox on my facebook page and just type in gary rupcha my full name that's it okay do you have an instagram also gary? i do have an instagram and it is called duitarians d o slash i t e r i a n s duitarians okay du and, and the whole duitarian things means that that you know we have all this complexity about different types of diet so I come in here and just say, just do it. You're a duetarian. That's that's the diet you're on. You're just doing it. So that's why I call it duetarian. That's D O I T E R I A N S. Duetarians. Awesome. That's and also, answer. Gary, I learned you're in art. I see some photos in the background. Are those? Yeah, your... man. Okay. Where can oh, people... what... those are your personal paintings right there? Those are my personal paintings, man. These are the originals. I have a website up, and, and it's, it's on fineartamerica.com. That's fineartamerica.com. And like I said earlier on, you just punch in my name, Gary Rupchan, into fineartamerica.com, and you'll see all the stuff up there I have. You guys, fineartamerica.com. You heard it, guys. my full name. Uh, go buy some paintings. Support this brother. Uh, I'm going to put this in the description, so all the information is here, and it's about yes, empowering sir. each other. Gary, once again, my man, I appreciate you coming on the show. And thanks for holding me accountable, okay? Appreciate you. Oh, I will. You know I will. You'll see. You'll see. Appreciate it.